Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to tonight's presentation of the Sherelle McMahon Medal. My name is Clint Stanaway. It is my great thrill and pleasure to be your host for this evening's awards night. Uh, firstly, we'd like to acknowledge the Bunurong people as the traditional owners and custodians on the land in which we gather this evening, and we pay our respects to elders past present and also emerging. We also extend this respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people present today. We also recognise the tremendous contribution that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people make to sport and acknowledge the power of sport to promote reconciliation, to enhance belonging and reduce inequality. What a wonderful night we have in store for you this evening. It's the first time in three years that we actually get to hold a Sherelle McMahon medal in person here in Melbourne, which is a great thrill. We'd like to welcome you all, in particular, the following special guests. Netball Victoria and Melbourne Vixens Chief Operating Officer Steve Gatton, members of the Netball Victoria Board and Executive. Hello also to our very special guest, Sherelle McMahon, Australian Netball Champion, Melbourne Vixens Legend, and of course, the namesake of tonight's Sherelle McMahon medal. We also welcome Bruce Atkinson, MP. He is a member for Eastern Metropolitan Region. Sarah Stiles, Director of the Office for Women in Sport. Our very important Melbourne Vixens partners. And of course, our guests of honour tonight, the Melbourne Vixens. The team, the squad members, coaches, staff and their families, as well as those streaming live from home. A round of applause for you all. We'd also like to start off by acknowledging, saying hello and sad that they can't be here. Some people that couldn't be in attendance tonight, in particular, Netball Victoria and Melbourne Vixen CEO Rosie King, OAM, the coach of the Melbourne Vixen, Simone McInnes, OAM. I'm sure they'll be watching in from home, so girls, be on your best behaviour. Um, with our first full season back home since 2019, it was amazing. I'm sure you'll agree here tonight to have our team play in front of our loyal members, fans, family and friends at John Kane Arena. And it was indeed a very successful season, the team only dropping the two matches in the regular season and of course making it all the way through to the grand final. Although it must be said it wasn't the result we wanted in Perth on Sunday to be able to make it to the Super Netball grand final in another uh, often challenging season is a huge accomplishment and the team should be very proud. Congratulations, girls, on your achievements. A few housekeeping matters. The toilets, by the way, are to my right uh, of the room if you need those throughout the evening. We'd also like to make note that we have some players who are under protocols as they make their way to the upcoming Commonwealth Games, so please ensure that we are maintaining social distancing. Unfortunately, Netball Victoria President Carol Cathcart could not be here with us tonight, but she has sent this short message. I'll read it on her behalf. I'm sorry I can't be with you all this evening. I'd like to congratulate Simone, Kate, Liz, the players and support staff for your efforts this season. The result wasn't what we'd hoped for and you worked so hard to achieve it, you gave it your all. Speaking to so many supporters across the season, they've enjoyed going to games and watching you play. It was great to have our team play in our state. You're an inspiration to so many from our new participants and fans to those who have a lifelong love of the game. Thanks also to our partners, our stakeholders, our sponsors. Special thanks to the government with their support of netball, including a new home, which provides the best netball high performance training environment for the Vixens to play. Thanks also to our Inner Sanctum and Melbourne Vixens members. Your enthusiasm, your support of our team is appreciated and unparalleled. Thanks to Rosie and her team who go above and beyond to support the Vixens and to provide a great home game experience. It would be remiss of me not to mention the fantastic work completed by Rebecca Webster over many years, and we wish her all the best. We wish her all the best in her new venture at the VIS. And finally, congratulations to all award winners this evening. Unfortunately, as I also mentioned, Netball Victoria and Melbourne Vixen CEO Rosie King OEM could not be here tonight, but she has recorded this special message for us all.
Hello all, I'm so disappointed not to be able to join you tonight. I'm sure that you will have a wonderful evening, the first Sherelle McMahon medal celebration together after past years of disruption. I'll be watching from home and quietly toasting to you all. Thankfully, I always have a bottle of bubbles in the fridge. And yes, there is an awful lot to celebrate with the Vixens. We added a couple of pieces of silverware to our cabinet this year, starting with the pre-season Team Girls Cup and then claiming back the Sergeant McKinnis Cup throughout the season. And whilst a win on the weekend would have been the cherry on the top, we know that greater success is still ahead of you all. The past three years have been some of the most challenging. Just when we thought COVID restrictions are over, our team had to make even more sacrifices and this certainly isn't lost on us. When borders were reopening and restaurants and venues were easing restrictions and communities are trying to put COVID behind us, our team had to endure further restrictions and protocols, endless testing, endless wearing of masks, and in many ways, self-imposed lockdowns. We know that the Vixens have sacrificed an awful lot again this year and we truly appreciate your commitment once again. Now, I have purposely written off um, writing this speech until our season was over, which frankly I thought was a three-quarter time of the prelim final. And what followed in that game will forever be one of the most exciting sporting events that I have ever been part of anywhere in the world, any sport played. I thought a lot about the team since then, both while travelling over to Western Australia, carrying our hopes and dreams, and then travelling home a little bit deflated, but also very proud and wondered about what it is that makes you, in my mind, such a special group. I had the honour of knowing the late and great Frank Costa when he was the president of the Geelong Footy Club. A passionate man in all aspects of his life, business, the cats, but more importantly, his family. He always said, character first, talent second. You see, there's a lot of talent out there all vying for spots on your team or in your organisation, but Frank believes that you should always recruit players and staff for their character and values as those traits added more to the overall team. And so I see this in the Vixens group as well. Now, don't get me wrong, you have buckets of talents, but as, or even more importantly, you have character, big open-hearted character. The people who have gone before you, the exes of our great game of netball, started the Vixens culture and you are building on that and making it your own, just as those who will follow in your footsteps will. Culture evolves and it takes many to build it and bring it to life and you're part of that legacy building. I'm very proud of the culture of the Vixens. You can see it in the way that you go about your business, how you interact, how you both represent Netball Victoria, the Melbourne Vixens and our sport. How you carry yourselves both after a win, perhaps even more importantly though, after a loss, even your hearts are breaking. You play in the best netball competition in the world and no doubt it's a very important part of your life right now. But of course it shouldn't be the most important part of your life, which is about the people who love you and the people you love. I had the pleasure of spending time with the families and friends over dinner the other night in Perth and I realised how lucky I am to be a very small, to be, small part of your life. And hopefully down the track you'll be able to look back on your time with the Vixens with great joy as being involved in a wonderful team. Of course, there are many, many people to thank for contributing to the success of the team this year. Thank you to our Melbourne Vixen sponsors, who are Origin, HCF, Flight Centre, Six, Gilbert, American Tourista, A1 Parking, Puma, Deacon, The Cafe, BIS, Strapper, 2XU, the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation, KO and the City of Melbourne. We could not do what we do without your commitment. We know that you've got lots of options to get involved in and invest in. But we also know that our relationship with you is more than just a transaction and we truly appreciate your ongoing support. Thank you also to our amazing Inner Sanctum members and our supporters. Your continued engagement in what we do is just magnificent. Thank you to our Vixen staff, so ably led by Simone Beck. I have the utmost respect for how this group operates. I learn a lot when I see you all in action. Thank you to our mighty Melbourne Vixen athletes, to our coaching team, Simone, Di, Caitlin, Joe and Susan, to our Vixen staff, Lisa, Emma, Peter, David, Emily, Steve, Kylie King, Sam, Shana and Tony, plus all of the Netball Victoria staff that helped to deliver the season. 
Now, finally, and I know that she's going to be absolutely hating me singling her out, but I want to recognise Beck Webster, our general manager, in her final weeks of being part of the team. Beck has been an integral part of the Netball Victoria team now for the past eight years, and she leaves us soon to transition to her new role with our trusted partners, the Victorian Institute of Sport. So we'll be able to stay connected with Beck while she moves to the next stage of her career. I've had the pleasure of walking, working alongside her now for the past six years, and it's been an absolute privilege to watch her grow into an exceptional leader. Beck works incredibly hard behind the scenes to ensure every I is dotted and every T is crossed. Her intellectual capacity and strategic thinking add enormously to our organisation. She is respectful in her debates and discussions. She's receptive and non-judgmental. But more than anything, Beck is kind and cares about others. She values people for who they are, not just for what they give the organisation. Beck is always willing to listen as she truly wants to understand how best to support people. And when other people achieve their goals, that's a win for her. She doesn't look for plaudits or praise, but she deserves some in spades. Thank you, Beck, for your contribution. You've made a difference, which is about the best anyone could ever hope for. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Thank you so much to Rosie. We do miss her tonight. In fact, uh, we miss everyone who can't be here. Um, there is a live stream. I want to just do a little experiment. The cameras are up the back end there. Can you just all turn around and just offer everyone at home a big wave? We do miss you, and we hope to see you, obviously, very, very soon. We'd now like to welcome uh, Emily Mannix to the stage to present the first of our gifts. Okay, we'd like to start tonight's proceedings by acknowledging our squad members who are, of course, an integral part of this team. Please welcome to the stage, Ruby Barkmeyer, Jordan Kranzberg, and Gabby Coffey. We also acknowledge Maggie Karras, who unfortunately cannot be here tonight, and Emily Andrew, who was not unable to be here because she's attending the 19 and under Australian squad camp in Canberra, as well as Shani Lambden, who is also unable to be here tonight. Congratulations and a round of applause to our squad members. Thank you so much, ladies. This season, we've also had three players who have debuted with the Melbourne Vixens and are now part of the Vixens Club forever. We'd like to welcome to the stage Melbourne Vixens Club member number 19, Tegan Phillip. She's going to present the newest members with their certificates. Hey, Teagues. Thank you, Teagues. And we do welcome to this very special club. It is an exclusive club. Vixens number 58, Kira Austin. We also welcome and congratulate Vixen number 59, Olivia Lewis. Also, congratulations to Vixen number 60, Shardy Lambden, who, of course, is unable to be here tonight. A round of applause for our debut Vixens. OK. Thanks, Tees. <laughs> It's now time to move on to our first award for the evening. It is the Vixens Volunteer of the Year Award. I'd like to ask Melbourne Vixens Match Day Ops Manager, Stacey O'Neill, to the stage to present this award. Thank you, Stacey. <laughs> so
So, of course, our Melbourne Vixens volunteers, they are an integral part of the Vixens family to game days, and we'd not be able to run a match day without their amazing support. Firstly, we'd like to acknowledge Carmel Wright and Liz Upton, who have celebrated 25 years of service. Well done, ladies. We'd also like to thank our volunteers who have assisted us at Team Girls Cup, Terrelgan Takeover, pre-season matches and, of course, ongoing at our season home matches. But the winner of the 2022 Vixens Volunteer of the Year Award is Marilla Chan. Well done, Marilla. Thank you. Now I want to ask our Chief Operating Officer, Steve Gatt, to present our next award. Steve, welcome to you. And our next award for the evening is the Outstanding Service Award. By way of background, this award is voted by all team staff and athletes. It's awarded to the person who has significantly contributed to the development of the team. The winner has provided a great level of support to athletes and to staff across the year and has also represented the team in line with the Vixens' values. The winner of the 2022 Outstanding Service Award for the Melbourne Vixens is Dr Peter Brown. Very popular, very popular winner in the room. Okay, the next award for this evening is the Excellence in Sport and Life Award. This award is presented to a player deemed to have demonstrated a balanced lifestyle as determined by Vixen's management, coaching and support staff. The winner of the 2022 Excellence in Sport and Life Award, it is Shani Lambden. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but Shani isn't here tonight. So congratulations to her. We'd like to welcome uh, to the stage Tegan Phillip again to uh, assist with the next presentation, Teagues. You're getting your steps up tonight, well done. This year is a special year for one of our co-captains in Kate Maloney. She's celebrating 10 years with the Melbourne Vixens. A fresh-faced youngster from Diamond Creek, Kate made her way through the Victorian netball pathway via the City West Falcons and Vic Fury to debut for the Vixens in 2013. A natural-born leader, Kate has captained the club since 2017, becoming just the third Vixen to reach 100 games in 2020. She has, if you don't mind, two championships, two Sherelle McMahon medals and three coaches awards to her name. As we welcome Kate to the stage, let's have a look at some of her highlights from the past decade. I started playing netball at the age of six, uh, just at my local netball courts on a Saturday morning. And I started playing netball because the girls at school were playing, my mum played. Kate was just a baby when she first started. You know, just a young, young kid, got an opportunity, perhaps you know, out of nowhere. Such a hard worker, just wanted to please and, and do everything as well as she could. She's one of those players that will just go hard for everything and she loves wearing the, the dress and wearing the big V. She's been able to bring our Vixens playing group on a really special journey, one that a lot of us have been there for a long part of it. She's sort of one of those people who is just sort of good at everything that it's kind of annoying. <laughs> Always been a big team player and doing whatever she can for her teammates and the players around her. Keep going, mate. I think she's going to leave such a, a strong legacy. I mean, she has that strong passion and, and commitment for this club. Being alongside her when she debuted for the Australian Diamonds is really special. To have that 10 years, that history with Kate, it's pretty special. Come on! Come on! Um, Kate, congratulations. Can I start by getting you to reveal what you said to me as you walked up? 
said you could have left the three coaches all that's out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, congratulations. Um, we love everything you do on and off the court. Um, if someone had told you back in 2013 you'd chalk up 10 years with the Vixens, what would you have been thinking? Yeah, I, I wouldn't have believed them at all, to be honest. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I think when I first signed at the Melbourne Vixens, uh, it was a dream come true and I would have been happy with one year. And to think that I'm standing here 10 years later is absolutely amazing. I've been able to share my career with so many amazing people. Like Tegan was there in 2013, Sherelle, and the amount of Melbourne Vixens players in our Melbourne Vixens club who have helped me over these 10 years has been incredible and um, it's an amazing group to be a part of. It's an amazing club and I honestly wouldn't want to play anywhere else. One of the constants in that 10 years has been this stability you've brought to the playing list and to the club, even in the face of, of change, because there's been quite a bit of change. What does that say about the culture that you've helped build at the club? Yeah, I was lucky enough to start in 2013 alongside Simone McInnes, our coach, um, and soon later, Liz Watson, Joe Weston, Emily Mannix. Um, MJ wasn't too far later as well, and we've been able to create this amazing group of players who want to play for the Melbourne Vixens, and it's a credit to all of our players, our staff. They create this environment where you step into it and you don't want to leave. And um, I just feel so lucky to have been a part of Netball Victoria, the Melbourne Vixens, everyone at Netball Victoria who has helped me grow as a player and as an athlete and um, I have so much to thank and repay to them and yeah I feel extremely grateful to be able to pull on our navy blue dress every single week to run out alongside these amazing girls here and to represent uh, Victoria because it's a pretty special club to play for. And Kate Maloney we've been very grateful for your service over 10 years please congratulate and thank our co-captain Kate Maloney. Well, not only has our captain, uh, co-captain been here for 10 years, um, our fearless leader and coach of the Melbourne Vixens, uh, Simone McInnes OAM, is also celebrating a decade at the club. And we say hello to Simone uh, somewhere there uh, on the live stream. Um, a highly decorated player, including a captain of the Melbourne Phoenix in a championship in 1997 and multiple gold medals at international level. Simone joined the coaching ranks at the Vixens in 2012. Head coach, as head coach, she's overseen the club's growth into a championship winning powerhouse, renowned of course, as Kate just mentioned, for its culture of excellence. Congratulations to Simone on 10 years with the Melbourne Vixens. You know, walking in as a young 20 year old uh, into training my first time, I was probably a little bit scared of Simone. Um, more just because of the, so much respect that I had for her as a player and as a coach and um, she's unbelievably caring of every single player that goes through um, her teams and yeah feel very lucky to have had her as a coach. Yeah I'd have to say memory wise the greatest the greatest ones are the two premierships we've won in 2014 but probably the highlight for me so far would be 2020 it was such a tough year um, being in the hub and I remember Simone Mingin and saying what are you doing for the next six or seven weeks and end up like nearly three and a half months so it was hard on everyone we missed our you know, missed our families. I missed a milestone with my twins' birthdays. So um, I'd say that's the toughest year, but it was probably the best year, the outcome at the end, um, when we won, and it was such a really great game to coach in. So that would be my highlight 2020. Something I admire about Simone is that she just has so much belief in her playing group, and she has so much care for every single player, and um, yeah, we're just really lucky to have her. What would they not know about Simone? She is a CrossFit junkie, uh, that she is a crazy dog person, <laughs> um, or that she, yeah, she likes it. She likes to dance every now and then in the change room. Maybe one of those, I think, is something that people don't know about Simone. Simone has been the best, the best coach I've had. She's been there right from the start and, and I think everyone has so much respect for her, um, past players as well and, and I guess even when she was a player she is such a strong icon of netball in Victoria which is awesome and, and for her to be at this club for 10 seasons like, that is huge and to be a head coach for that long. Um, there's been amazing times, there's been extremely tough times but she's the one who's kept this ship sailing in the way that we want it to go and I think she should be extremely proud of, of what she's done for us as individual players as well.
Yes, congratulations to our CrossFit junkie, crazy dog lady, and also championship winning coach at the Melbourne Vixens on a decade of immense service. I'd now like to welcome uh, another legend of the club, Caitlin Thwaites, to the stage to present the next of our awards. Katie? Okay, so the winner of, or the next award, before I reveal the winner, I'm going to tell you about the, the award. Uh, the next award is the Coaches Award. It is voted on by the coaching staff and is presented to an athlete um, that has shown significant growth on the court in both competition and training throughout the year. The winner of the 2022 Coaches Award is Ruby Barkmeyer. <laughs> So unexpected was the win, she was mid-entree, so <laughs> still chewing on the way up. Well done, Rubes. Uh, Katie, Katie. Um, now to an award that this year has a bit of special meaning to it due to our success in the finals. Uh, the Player of the Finals Award, it's voted on by the coaching staff based on the most outstanding player performance in all finals appearances. The winner of the 2022 Player of the Finals Award is Joe Weston. Those who voted on this award said nobody builds defensive pressure like Joe Weston and this final series was no exception at all. Across three four-quarter performances, she gathered six intercepts, four deflections, her eight gains, including three pickups, coming at crucial times in each match. The preliminary final was a standout. Joe partnering brilliantly with them to keep the Giants to just seven goals in each of the first and last quarters. A remarkable effort against two of the most prolific shooters in the competition. Congratulations, Joe. And congratulations to all our award winners so far this evening. There has been some great achievements to celebrate already. It brings us uh, to the time of the night where we start to vote on the Suncorp Super Netball matches throughout the 2022 season. So the voting system is such that after each home and away match throughout the year, three coaches or staff award a 3-2-1 vote to the players they consider to be the best on court. That means there is a maximum of 18 points available each round. However, not all 18 points must be awarded each round. The votes are then tallied at the end of the season, and the athlete with the most votes is announced the Sherelle McMahon medalist. A runner-up prize will also be awarded tonight to the athlete receiving the second highest number of votes. Netball Victoria Chief Operating Officer Steve Gatt will have the honours of reading out the first of the votes for our first four matches, but before he does that, we're going to check out some of the action from rounds one to four. Our first game saw us head to the Sunshine State to take on the Queensland Firebirds. We were looking for redemption and ready to fight. Oh, big moment from the Vixens. Kira Austin and Liv Lewis took to the court for the first time as Vixens, both doing the Navy dress proud. It was a high scoring hit out with Samison making a significant impact, sinking super shots and Maloney and Watson providing their trademark leadership and composure in the middle. We took the win, 70 goals to 65. In round two, we continued on the road to face the reigning premiers, the New South Wales Swiss at Kent Rosewall Arena. Kumwenda and Samison raced out of the blocks, finding an early groove while Weston and Mannix had the defensive pressure dialed up to 11, collecting a wealth of intercepts and rebounds. Beautiful intercept from Kate Maloney. But the Swifts fought back. With just five minutes left to play, the margin was back to just four goals. Oh, we've got a ball game on our hands now. Watson, crowned player of the match, maintained her composure to guide us to a five goal victory. Heritage Round, our first home game of the year at John Kane Arena. And being back in front of our fans was electric. Gwenda with the layup! 
Austin had a standout performance coming up against her old side, nailing 24 goals in her first full game since returning from injury. The defensive trio of Mannix, Weston and Eddie turned up the heat to deliver plenty of turnover ball. Withstanding some real physicality all over the court, we blew the margin out in the final term to register a 12-goal win. It was a quick turnaround moving into round four, a top-of-the-table clash with West Coast Fever. The winner would claim outright first position on the Super Netball ladder. Lining up against her old side, Lewis leapt into the game, making an immediate impact in defence against Fever powerhouse Janiel Fowler. Lewis just rips that ball out of the air. Austin was hard to stop, sinking three super shots in the first quarter, well supported by the injection of Samerson. Unbelievable by the Vixens youngster. Watson starred with 25 assists as we remain undefeated with a nine goal margin at the final whistle. Round one, Queensland Firebirds versus Melbourne Vixens. Two votes. Rani Samerson. Three votes. Joe Weston. Four votes. Liz Watson. Round two. New South Wales Swifts versus Melbourne Vixens. Two votes. Maui Kamwinda. Four votes. Liz Watson. Five votes. Joe Weston. Seven votes. Emily Mannix. <laughs> Fantastic response. <laughs> Round three, Melbourne Vixens versus Giants netball. Four votes, Kate Maloney. Five votes, Kira Austin. Nine votes, Joe Weston. <laughs> Round four, Melbourne Vixens versus West Coast Fever. Three votes, Olivia Lewis. Seven votes, Kira Austin. Eight votes, Liz Watson. Ooh, I like that. It's good. Um, Let's take a look at the leaderboard as it stands after round four, shall we? Um, Joe Weston ahead by one from Liz Watson, followed by Kira Austin on 12 votes. Um, we've got MJ on 11, M Mannix next with that seven. Kate Maloney on four votes, followed by Liv Lewis on three, and rounding it out with Rani Samerson on two votes. I now want to ask General Manager of Vixen's Performance and Pathways, Rebecca Webster, to the stage to read out the votes while we look at highlights from rounds five to eight. Round five brought our first loss of the year, playing our third game in eight days. We struggled to fire for a full four quarters against a clinical lightning side on the Sunshine Coast. This year from Super Shots and she delivers again. While MJ held strong under the post and our mid-court fought valiantly, a 24 goal third quarter onslaught from the lightning proved too much to overcome. The final score 71 to 58. We return home for Anzac round and bounce back in style, defeating the Thunderbirds by five goals in front of a fired up home crowd. Here at Austin, I'll show you. In the absence of co-captain Maloney, Hannah Mundy stepped up and impressed with her work rate and strong drives to serve ledge. Kate Eddy continued her trademark workload, bringing the ball down the court and a couple of well-timed Mannix intercepts at crucial moments ensured we were back on the winner's list. With Eddie and Mundy absent, round seven saw the Magpies claim a 10-goal win in a derby with Rather Forget. A backline reshuffle had Weston repping the long arm brigade in wing defence. Maloney made her return with a huge four-quarter effort in the middle. And Watson delivered a game-high 28 goal assists against fellow Diamond Ash Brazel. The major positive was the debut of Shani Lambden. And there she is, Shani Lambden! who claimed the fan-voted MVP for her performance. 
the last of three straight home games proved to be the game of the season so far. A nail biter against the Firebirds in front of a huge home crowd decked out in pink in support of BCNA. Down by as many as eight in the second quarter, we steadily clawed the margin back thanks to some huge defensive gains. And the roof almost blew off John Kane Arena in the dying minutes as we claimed a two goal victory. Di Honey made her debut as head coach in Simone's absence, making some clutch mid court changes that proved to be the difference. Loving your work, Di Honey. Maloney shut down Lara Dunkley as Mundy proved a huge lift in tandem with Watson in wing attack and centre. Round five, Sunshine Coast Lightning versus Melbourne Vixens. Three votes, Liz Watson. Six votes, Hannah Mundy. Nine votes, Kate Maloney. Round six, Melbourne Vixens versus Adelaide Thunderbirds. One vote, Kira Austin. One vote, Hannah Mundy. One vote, Maui Kamwenda. Six votes, Joe Weston. Nine votes, Liz Watson. Round seven, Melbourne Vixens versus Collingwood Magpies. I think that's the game we want to forget, guys. <laughs> Two votes, Shani Lambden. Three votes, Kate Maloney. Six votes, Liz Watson. Seven votes, Lucky Emily Mannix. <laughs> Round eight, Melbourne Vixens versus Queensland Firebirds. One vote, Hannah Mundy. Two votes, Liz Watson. Four votes, Kate Maloney. Five votes, Joe Weston. Six votes, Maui Kamwenda. Thanks, Beck. Um, we're going to enjoy a break in proceedings now uh, so we can enjoy our main meal before... No, sorry, we'll come back uh, very shortly um, with the rest of the vote count, so please enjoy.
Hi, I'm Joe Ingalls. Hi, I'm Renee Ingalls, and we are part of Culture City. Culture City provides sensory accessibility and inclusion for all of those with, with invisible disabilities. We are really, really proud to be on the board. A sensory room is a safe space, a safe space for families and individuals that may have sensory difficulties or inv invisible disabilities and may just need that break time. We know all about that with our son Jacob. It means everything to us to have this room named after us. We're passionate about Culture City and all that we do at Culture City. We're very passionate about the netball and in particular the Melbourne Vixens. We plan on going to the netball for years and years to come and it means that we can bring Jacob to the netball. Um, we're really excited that we're honoured in this way and that hopefully more families get the opportunities that we now get now that the sensory space is on at John Cape Arena. And hopefully I can get my debut game seeing as I've trained so much with the Vixens. He's kidding himself. The Melbourne Vixens and Netball Victoria are again leading the way and this is going to be the first Culture City certified sensory accredited arena across Australia for netball. This is awesome. We can't wait to get into the stadium and watch a game with all you guys. Thank you so much for the support. Go Vixens! <laughs>
Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. I've been trying to get on for a few weeks now. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go back a couple of years. Ooh. Um, I feel like a lot of people would spell your name incorrectly, <laughs> um, but your um, heritage is from the Cook Islands and Germany. Yes. Yeah, so mum is German yeah. and dad is, he was born in Rarotonga. Which I went to a couple of years ago, which Did was you? very cool <laughs> with the um, some of the Diamond Girls. And I remember you saying, um, that your family was from the Cook Islands and yeah. it's, it's beautiful over there. Do you have many relatives that live in Australia and New Zealand? Because I feel like there's lots of people that go in between New Zealand and Cook Islands. They are. I have a lot of family. So a lot of them are in Sydney and Queensland. Mm -hmm. um, we have a few like distant relatives here in Melbourne, but that's the bulk of it. And then a lot of them are in New Zealand. And when did you start playing netball? I started when I was 11. My mum kind of pushed me into it because I was my father's daughter. I love watching the rugby, going oh, to the yes. rugby with him, <laughs> basketball, following in my older brother's footsteps. So mum was like, play netball. I was like, no, this is a girl sport. And then I was crying and dad didn't understand. So outside of netball, uh, you've been to uni, but what else do you like to do with yourself? Do you have any hobbies? The worst question That's the ever. worst. That is the... I hate that question. Because I go to netball, <laughs> I go home and I sleep. That's it. My hobby is eating and sleeping and netball. Um, if I had a dog, mm. I would love... I mean, I do have a dog. Her name's Puddles. She's a little chihuahua. But Puddles. she doesn't like other dogs. Oh, okay. So it's like, I don't like taking her out on walks because then I can't even meet other dogs. Otherwise, that would probably be my hobby. Trying to scout for other dog friends. Yeah. I'd take her to visit Billy. Billy loves Alfie. other dogs. <laughs> She just barks. She's just a little yapper, so she's not she's not great with other dogs. It makes me kind of embarrassed. I'm like, oh, I don't know her. <laughs> she's not mine. Puddles, puddles. Um, but probably, yeah. named it? Was that your naming process? No, it wasn't. <laughs> My brother was initially going to name her Layla. That's which beautiful. I think a, yeah, That's it's nice. a very pretty name. But you know, we'd get her excited, I guess, and be like, oh hi, and she'd just pee and create. <laughs> puddles every she still does it to this day <laughs> i'll walk in through the back gate i'm like hi and she just pees i'm like this is why you're named <laughs> so you graduated from monash with a bachelor of science and a bachelor of arts very exciting and what did you major in um i majored in physiology and criminology now, speaking of criminology, um, there was a cybercrime that was committed recently. Uh, most yes. of our Vixen fans <laughs> probably know about this. Um, it was a disaster. I've never, yes. you know, it really hurt you. It did. Um, have you moved past it enough that you feel open enough to talk about it? I do. It's very funny to me now. Um, it's hilarious. So I got hacked. It was on a Instagram. grievous crime on Instagram. <laughs> It was awful. Um, it was like two days before my birthday too. <laughs> Happy birthday to Happy you. Birthday. Best present you could have asked for. Happy birthday. You've lost everything. Um, <laughs> so one of my old friends, she got hacked as well and I didn't realize and she messaged me asking for help. And I was like, sure, I can give you help. And she was like, um, she started asking me all these questions like, what was the street that you lived on? What was this? And I was like, I'm smarter than this. I was like, I'm not going to answer anything. <laughs> and then she got me to send her a link and I was like, I'm not clicking on it. This is fine. So like someone sent me something from my number. Um, so I got the link and I just sent it through to her and that's how they got in. Oh, that's and I, education for education. everyone listening. Do not, don't send links, don't click on links, don't answer questions. Just don't talk to people. Um, it's been a while on Western's World that we've had a word of the week, but I thought yes. with your recent education, it would be nice to do a little bit of a special edition given um, what's happened recently in the mm -hmm. cybercrime world. Yes. So we're back uh, with Western's words of the week. <laughs> in brackets, <laughs> criminology edition. So, Oof. okay, we're gonna start off easy. Okay. Rani, mm -hmm. what is an alibi? Ooh, ooh, I don't know the exact definition of an alibi, but say you're convicted of a crime and you were like somewhere else. It's a story of where you were or a series of events of where you were, um, where a crime took place. That is correct. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. One from one. Okay, last one. What is a vigilante? Ooh, is that someone who commits crimes in the name of good? Because I feel like Robin Hood, 
he was like a vigilante, some people didn't like him. Who else? Batman, Batman mm -hmm. don't like him, yeah. Yes, that is correct. So, I guess your criminology degree has really paid off. Yes. I couldn't, I, I don't think I know how to spell vigilante, but... Do you want to give it a go? V-I... G I yep. <laughs> Vigil A N T E. That is correct. Mm. Bonus points to Ronnie Sanderson. <laughs> Let's go do some quick fire. How about okay, that? I'm excited. Quick fire. Quick fire for what is the subject of these quick fire questions? Well, we're gonna move and do it somewhere else. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go do some quick fire. Okay, Ronnie. Quick fire. I'm gonna yes. give you two options, and I just want you to answer off the top of your head. Okay? Yes. Got it. You, you look a bit nervous. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Okay. Let's go. Netball or rugby? Netball. <laughs> goal shooter or goal attack? Goal shooter. Good question. Um, oh, good answer. Good question. <laughs> good question. Um, morning or night? Night. Savory or sweet? Sweet. Coffee or tea? Tea. And lastly, Vixens or lightning? Vixens! Great answer! Vixens! Hello, welcome to this episode of Western's World. Uh, I'm my own special guest today, so you're going to be spending the morning with me as I head into our Vixens training session for the week. So it's currently uh, bright and early. It's 7am in the morning. It's actually not that bright, but I'm gonna make some breakfast and then we're gonna to head to the training center. Breakfast of champions this morning. Avocado on toast. Let me go, I'm a chef. Just heading into training now. We've got gym this morning and we have a little break and then we have our court work session this afternoon before our semi final on Saturday night. Yes. Gym time! Woo! Yeah. Whoa! Just lunchtime. I've got a coffee. Emily? Toasty! <laughs> I'll serve you. There's no plates in our um, athlete lounge, so we're making do. It's not very environmentally friendly, but we make do. Um, what have you got for lunch, MJ? I've got toast and I put cheese and ham. Ham and cheese toasty. Look at you. You're Australian now. <laughs> so, mate. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're done with training now, so I'm just going to hit the recovery pools and then see the physio, and that's it for the day. Here's the recovery pool. Emma is so cold, she's got her puffer jacket on. <laughs> And that's it, I'm gonna jump in the pool and we'll see all of our Vixens fans there Saturday night, 7 p.m. when we take on the Fever in our semi-final. Go Vixens! Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, if I can get you to take a seat, please. We are ready to continue formalities here up on stage. Okay, seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. 
Welcome back. Um, I trust that you enjoyed your main meals. Before we continue with our, before we continue with our vote count, I would like to invite, if I can, I'd like to invite, if I can, Sherelle McMahon back up onto stage to assist with our next presentation. Welcome, Sherelle. In 2020, Melbourne Vixens uh, club member number 12, Caitlin Thwaites, and Melbourne Vixens club member number 19, Tegan Phillip, they retired from netball and the Melbourne Vixens. Tonight, we will be inducting them into the Melbourne Vixens Champions Club. The Champions Club recognises retired players and coaches who have captained the Melbourne Phoenix, Kestrels or Vixens, or have played or coached in excess of 100 league games, the majority being with the Vixens, Phoenix or Kestrels. Firstly, to Caitlin Thwaites. Caitlin played netball at the elite level for 18 seasons. Katie first took to the court at the top level as a 15-year-old in 2002, representing the Melbourne Kestrels. She was then a member of the inaugural Melbourne Vixens team in 2008 and helped them claim that premiership in 2009. Throughout Katie's career, she's had the opportunity to represent five clubs, the Kestrels, the Vixens, the Central Pulse, New South Wales Swiss, Collingwood, and then, <laughs> and then returning to the Vixens in 2019. She did, of course, cap off that stellar career with a championship in 2020. Next to Tegan Phillip. Tegan's story, it's a bit different to Katie's, it must be said. Not only did she play at the elite level for, seven, uh, for 11 years, she was able to continue her career across those 11 years at the one club right here at the Vixens. Tegan's debut for the club came in 2010 when an injury to none other than Sherelle McMahon mid-match allowed her to take the court for the first time. She took that opportunity, she relished it with both hands, she never looked back. From being named Melbourne Vixens Rookie of the Year in her debut season, Philip went on to be an integral part of the Vixens 2014 Premiership team, including being awarded Player of the Match in the Grand Final. 2014, it must be said, was a standout year in her career, the year she made her debut for the Diamonds, whom she'd go on to make 14 test appearances for. Teagues was then named joint runner-up in the 2015 Sherelle McMahon medal after a dominant season. In 2017, Teagan recovered from that knee injury, returned to the court as co-vice-captain, a position she held for three seasons. And then in 2019, Phillips, uh, Phillips surpassed uh, Sherelle's record, I believe, being the most capped Vixen when she played her 112th game in the iconic Vixen's dress. She played 133 games all up and is just one of four Vixens to have played 100 games for the club, retiring in the same match with a championship in 2020. It now gives me great pleasure to welcome both Caitlin Thwaites and Tegan Phillip to the stage as we look back at their careers.
Congratulations, ladies. Yes, there's talking. I'm sure you'll do just fine, Teagues. Katie, I want to start with you. Um, this is an accolade uh, which is afforded to a select few. What does it mean to you to stand here tonight in front of some of your nearest, your dearest former teammates and receive this honour? It's actually really special um, to me. I think, um, you know, as you mentioned, I did play for quite a few clubs. Um, so I, I guess to feel, once I'd retired, I kind of had mixed feelings about, well, actually, where do I belong? Or where, do I, where have I felt like I've um, played the majority of my career? Or, um, you know, really have that link and that bond with the club. And so to have something like this, I feel like has been... Um, a, a really great, um, you know, strength, a, a really good honour from, um, from the Vixens to, to really embrace the fact that, yes, I, I did come back to the club and, um, and I have, you know, played a lot of my, my netball with Victoria and so to, to feel embraced and, and loved by that, even though I did play for the opposition many oppositions for, um, for, for quite a few years. So, um, yeah, it's, it's actually really, really special to me. But there were those two very special stints at the Vixens. Um, what is it about this club that makes it so special and, you know, makes your heart sing? I think um, the history of Victorian netball um, that has... I mean, it, it's so strong and, and I've recently just this afternoon actually come back from um, Canberra with one of the underage, um, the, the under 17s Aussie um, squad. And to, to be, obviously I wasn't playing, I was coaching. <laughs> God, <laughs> let's just clarify that. Um, <laughs> um, but to see the strength that Victoria has, the quality of netball that is embedded in our system. Um, so I think for, for me to, to feel like I've been a part of that. I've been on the journey um, with so many of my, my peers along the way and, and to have, you know, for, for us all to, all to have assisted each other along the journey. You know, I started out in an, I think it was a primary schools team with Julie Corletto and Renee Hellenen and we went through the entire system together from grade six to playing for the Diamonds together. So to have, players like that around you, um, you know, to, to go through a system and, and to have those memories and those friendships along the way. I think it's, um, it's yeah, it's super special. One last one from me before I get to Teagues. And you're both super mums, it must be said, but um, your life looks a little bit different these days as a mum. And then also you've taken to coaching as well. How have you found that um, this year? How different is it to work at this level as a coach? Well, I was just explaining actually to, um, to Steve Gatt the fact that I, I feel like I had played and, and really got to an understanding of level of the sport for 20 years of looking at it from this angle as an athlete um, and all of a sudden I've kind of stepped in to this side and now I'm looking at the game from this angle and it's completely different. Um, so to kind of be stretching myself in that way, I know I'm still learning but to to have also been taken under the wing of the likes of Simone and Di, um, you know, and, and to feel like I can add value, um, you know, to the girls that are out there on the court. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I do have something to offer in that space and, and so um, it's, it's a new challenge for me and I'm definitely still learning. Are you, but a, are you a boss? Are you a, are you a coach boss? Um, I don't know, you can ask the girls. <laughs> what, are, what are you I reckon, you're, I reckon you're a cuddler. I reckon you're a cuddler, um, <laughs> Katie. Uh, but always inspirational, and um, this is due recognition for a, an amazing contribution to Victorian Nepal and also the, the Vixens as well. Congratulations, Katie. Uh, Tegan. Sure. Um, not many athletes get that fairy tale, do they? Um, having played as a one club player and then finishing. Your career at the very height, winning a championship. Um, how proud are you tonight to be recognised in this way by one of the loves of your life? One of the loves of your life, the Vixens. Yeah, it's obviously super special. I'm blessed to play all my career at one club and I do, um, or am really grateful for that because I know that that can be quite rare. Um, and being able to do that in, you know, the state that I 
was born and therefore lived not far away and always had my family and friends around. I think there's um, nothing better than that. So, um, yeah, really blessed. A, a girl from the Bellarine um, went on to become a Commonwealth Games medalist, uh, of all things. It's pretty special, isn't it? But in terms of the Vixens, what made you sort of stay and commit to the Vixens as a, as a one-club player? I think the people, for sure, especially um, when I came in uh, and there were the older players just making me feel welcome. Shaz was obviously there, Katie Thwaites was there, and uh, Bianca felt um, kind of really took me under her wing, and um, I really appreciate that. And I think the way um, that the girls led the team and they made you feel welcome um, certainly uh, cemented that for me, and I had no desire to go anywhere else. And so being able to just stay here um, and now have played with these bunch of girls who are absolutely awesome um, and the staff that have come through um, and you just create these really cool relationships that are pretty special, uh, I, yeah, it's really nice. Uh, we see you around quite a lot around the club on, on match days and at functions like this, but now Archie runs the show, doesn't he? Yes. Um, and as mum, um, you've got a little less time on your hands, but will we see you back you know, in a more involved netball role in the future, do you think? I'm not asking you to come out of retirement, by the way. <laughs> that won't be happening. I don't think my knees will allow that. <laughs> yes, a bit too much time on the court. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know. You never know. I have two coaching jobs that, this year that I never thought that I would be doing. So whatever comes my way, I'll make a decision then and we'll just see what happens. You're doing a stellar job of it as well. Please uh, congratulate and thank both thank ladies, you. including Tegan Phillip. <laughs> Uh, now it is time to get back to the uh, all-important all vote count for the remainder of the season. We're going to now look back at the highlights from rounds 9 to 11. Round 9 saw us head to Sydney to take on the Giants in what became the first overtime match of the season. MJ ran riot, sinking 50 from 50. Malawi from Wenda, the Malawi international on song. While Watson put out yet another player of the match performance with 46 feeds and 36 centre pass receives, ably supported by Maloney, who was everywhere with eight pickups to her name. A flurry of super shots from the Giants brought an 11 goal deficit back to a tie at 60 goals apiece at full time. Our first draw of season. 2022. We played an additional five minutes in front of a deafening Ken Rosewell Arena crowd and kept our nerve to take the win by three goals. Another midweek matchup against the Fever. This time in Perth brought smiles to the faces of Vixens fans as we delivered a clinical performance to win by six. Liv Lewis shut down former teammate Janelle Fowler while Kumwenda put on a show under the post. But Kumwenda, she's come to play. Variation in the midcourt proved effective with Mundy in wing attack, Watson at centre and Maloney tasked with stemming the flow of feeds to Fowler in wing defence. Watson delivered 53 feeds in a player of the match performance, leading her side to win off the back of a blistering 23 goal to 14 opening term. The Sergeant McInnes Cup was on the line in round 11 and we reclaimed it from the Swifts in style with a win at home. A slow start saw us five goals down at the first break, but Kate Eddy came on and took her former side apart with a handful of well-timed deflections and intercepts. Kate Eddy, daylight robbery. Kate Maloney was on fire in the middle, five deflections and five pickups to her name and dominating the second phase. Maloney comes flying through. The Swiss pegged our 11 goal margin back with some clutch super shots but it wasn't quite enough as we claim the win and the cup by six goals. Round nine, Giants netball versus the Melbourne Vixens. Four votes, Joe Weston. Five votes, Marwi Kamwenda. Nine votes, Liz Watson. Round 10, West Coast Fever versus Melbourne Vixens. One vote, Marwi Kamwenda. Two votes, Olivia Lewis. Three votes, Kate Maloney. Three votes, Kira Austin. And another nine votes, Liz Watson. 
Round 11, Melbourne Vixens versus the New South Wales Swifts. Three votes, Kate Eddy. Six votes, Liz Watson. Nine votes, Kate Maloney. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, let's take a look at the leaderboard as it stands after round 11. Um, okay, we have Kira Austin, 16 votes. We have MJ, 24. Kate Maloney, 32. <laughs> Joe Weston, uh, Liz Watson, there she is. Way ahead on 60. Let's take a look at some... <laughs> We have the final three rounds to look forward to of the season. We're going to take a look at some of the highlights from those matches before hearing the votes again from Shirelle again. Sit back and enjoy. Our final home game of the regular season saw us extend our winning streak to five, defeating a fast-finishing Lightning side by four goals. M Mannix took player of the match honours in a standout performance claiming four intercepts and six deflections. He managed beautiful intercept, footwork on point. While Watson racked up 40 feeds and 26 goal assists in another mid-court masterclass. The four goal win cemented our spot on top of the ladder, sitting two games clear of the second place fever with two rounds to go. We travelled to Adelaide in the penultimate round knowing a win would seal the minor premiership and in a low-scoring contest, we managed to claim a four-goal victory. And Maui Kamwenda delivers for the Vixens. A 40-feet performance from Liz Watson and another player of the match effort from Kate Maloney kept us in it as the Thunderbirds' defensive end put on a show. Liv Lewis came on in a shutdown role on Lanise Potgita and had an instant impact. An intercept and two deflections to her name. We converted some key intercepts in the last quarter, thanks to Kate Eddy's transition work. The Vixens are in front. They have turned it around. To claim a four-goal win and the minor premiership. The final home and away round was another nail-biter with Crosstown rival the Magpies fighting to keep their finals hopes alive. Oh, Liz Watson coming through. Rani Samerson made her long-awaited return and was quick to show off her signature turn-and-shoot style. Another huge performance from our defensive unit created opportunities. Ah, oh, blocked by Emily Mannix. Weston and Mannix combining with the steady work of Eddie Watson and Maloney to build a 10-goal margin before the Pies fought back to level the scores. Now scores are even. Our experience and poise made sure we held on for a two-goal win and took some winning momentum into the finals. Round 12, Melbourne Vixens versus Sunshine Coast Lightning. Two votes, Kate Maloney. Two votes, Liz Watson. Five votes, Joe Weston. Nine votes, Emily Mannix. <laughs> Round 13, Adelaide Thunderbirds versus Melbourne Vixens. Four votes, Joe Weston. Five votes, Liz Watson. Nine votes, Kate Maloney. Round 14, Collingwood Magpies versus Melbourne Vixens. Two votes, Kate Maloney. Two votes, Maui Kamwenda. Seven votes, Emily Mannix. Seven votes, Liz Watson. Build the suspense. Um, that brings us to the uh, end of the vote count as it stands for 2022. It is now time to announce our MVP runner-up and Sherelle has the honours. Thank you for that, Clint. The MVP runner-up for this season of the Melbourne Vixens most valuable player runner-up is Kate Maloney. <laughs> Perfect. Um, 
Kate, it, w it wouldn't be a Sherelle McMahon uh, medal night without you up on stage at least a couple of times. Um, what a season. Your 10th at the club, uh, co-captaining the side to a grand final. Uh, plenty to be proud of. What, what are your highlights of 2022? Yeah, I think, you know, there are so many highlights and after Sunday's game, as disappointed as we were, there was so much to be proud of for our team and, um, you know, the ups and downs that we've had along the way, but this group um, going, I don't like to say it, but from the bottom of the ladder back up to where I believe the Melbourne Vixens belong and that's right at the pointy end of the season and it, it didn't just happen. There was a lot of hard work that went into that from our coaching staff, our support staff and every single one of these girls sitting there tonight. Um, we've had a great year. As I said, it was a disappointing result, but so much to be proud of and um, yeah, I'm excited for next year already. What has it meant to have what has it meant to have your uh, mid-court partner in crime by your side, um, Liz Watson, this year? Yeah, I think she might have won. <laughs> <laughs> There's no surprises there. No, look, um, having a player like Lizzie back in the group, it, she brings so much to us on and off the court. Um, I think what I'm so proud of is, you know, people see her back out there and just kind of think, oh, you know, that's what Liz does, but the hard work that she put in last year that no one saw, um, I think, you know, you kind of, you, you just, it's just the standard that she brings, you know. It's not a surprise because she works so hard. We're up in the hub and she'd be waking up at all sorts of days, times in the day to go and train and um, so it's so great to have her back. Um, she's so important to our group. Uh, we know all about uh, what you've achieved this year with the Vixens. Um, in terms of internationally, uh, you're back in the Australian squad, um, headed to the Com Games. How did it feel, or how does it feel, to get on that plane? Yeah, it's super exciting. Um, you know, I kind of probably, it didn't really sink in. You know, we were so set on what we were doing as a group at Vixens, and it wasn't really until this week where I thought, oh my God, we've, I've got to start packing. We're leaving on Monday, that it's it started to sink in that it's happening. And to be able to be heading off to Birmingham with three of my, our Melbourne Vixens teammates, and then all, also MJ is going to be there as well. It's um, it's super exciting and can't wait to head over there and hopefully win back that gold medal. Um, the floor's yours to finish. I'm sure you've got some thank yous, maybe a, a pump up before the girls hit the town tonight. <laughs> I do, but I will be really, I will be really honest. I'm very surprised um, to be standing up here tonight. I think. Um, this group of girls who I've mentioned uh, have been absolutely outstanding this year and I think you could have given these awards to um, any one of them. So I will start off by thanking my teammates. You guys are incredible. You make me love coming to training each and every week and um, yeah, I love running out on court uh, with you all. I'd also like to say a big thank you to uh, Diane Simone who aren't here, so hopefully you're watching, but the amount of work that you put into our group, um, the standards that you ask us to achieve week in, week out, and your dedication to our team is something that's pretty amazing. So thank you, Diane Simone. To all of our support staff who are here and some who aren't, uh, thank you. You continue to make our club um, set the standard, I think, in our league for the professionalism, for um, you know the services that we have. So thank you so much to each and every one of you that help us get out on court and achieve what we achieve. Um, what made this year so special was being able to be back home playing in Melbourne. So thank you to our fans that are here tonight, but everyone that supported us throughout the year and also to all of our sponsors as well who enable us to get out on court and do what we do. I'm probably going to forget some people, but I'd also like to um, say a big thank you to my family. You guys are incredible and to all the families that are here. The support that we had over in Perth was amazing and mum and dad, my brother and my sister, you come and support me every single week. So, so grateful to have you guys behind me as well. So yeah, I think that's everyone. Thanks guys. <laughs> uh, well done and congratulations to our co-captain of the Vixens, Kate Maloney. Um, we've come to the moment we've all been waiting for on this Sherelle McMahon medal night. Uh, Who will take home the trophy? And a beautiful, it must be said, Sherelle McMahon medalist necklace. Over to you, Shazmak, to announce the winner. 
Thank you very much. And what an incredible story this is after spending the entire year on the sidelines last year. The winner of the Sherelle McMahon medal is Liz Watson. <laughs>
And a really special thanks to Steve Hawkins, who I think is watching from home. Um, he was the one who got me through my rehab. He pushed me at times and then held me back when I wanted to start running and he wouldn't let me start running. Um, but I think he just knew me inside out and our goal was to be back at the start of pre-season this year and just run with the group and not be on a modified program on the rehab court. So I was glad to be with the girls and enjoying that. Um, and to Rosie and Beck, especially to Beck, um, we are going to miss you so much. You do so much for this club and this team. Um, we love you guys, so thank you. And to this amazing team, um, I'm so happy to be part of the Vixens. I can't imagine playing anywhere else. It's been awesome just to be back out there on court with all of you and all the partners and family and friends that are here. You make us the Vixens family and we love you guys as crazy as we all are together. Um, to mum and dad and Nuna and all my uncles and aunties who I think I request 15 to 20 tickets each week because everyone wants to be there watching. Uh, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, it definitely doesn't go unnoticed, the messages, the calls, the dinners. Thank you very much. Um, to Hamish, thank you. I feel like you need a break. It's your first non-interrupted netball season that's been interrupted by Hub, so you've made it through every game. So thank you, but the way that you got me through rehab as well and, and got me back out on court. Um, yeah, love you guys so much. So thank you. Okay. Um, now going to invite Sherelle back up onto stage. Um, Liz, don't go anywhere. Um, we do have a little glass of champagne here. And if everyone can please stand up, we're going to raise a glass, a toast to the 2022 Sherelle McMahon medalist. Please congratulate, ladies and gentlemen, Liz Watson. <laughs> That's all right. Congratulations, congratulations to Liz again on her win. I almost lost a head of hair there with the sparklers, but anyway. Um, let's check out the final leaderboard now, how the team finished up. Um, in the end, as it starts to animate right here, you'll see the winner right at the top. Liz Watson was the clear winner with 74 votes. Kate Maloney, runner-up, 45 votes, followed closely by Joey Weston, 41. M Manix, 30. MJ, 26 votes. Kira Austin, 16 in her first season back from that injury. Hannah Mundy, 8 votes. Olivia Lewis, 5 in her first season in the Vixens dress. And Kate Eddy, 3. Rani Samson and Shani Lambden round out the votes with two apiece. Congratulations, a round of applause for all of our Vixens in 2022. That concludes our formalities for tonight. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us here tonight, as well as those at home. Hello and thank you for joining us on the live stream uh, on the Vixen social channels also. Well done on our award winners this evening and a final congratulations to our 2022 Sherelle McMahon medalists. Please enjoy your desserts.